All right, so this is where we left off last time, where we just had the droplets by themselves uh, on a texture, which is already pretty cool. But let's try to make it cooler. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to simulate that we have some fog on the window. And, um, and so for that, what I can use is I can use the MIP map of this texture. And so MIP maps is a whole uh, is a whole topic on its own, but uh, but just in a in a nutshell, a MIP map is a smaller version of the texture, or it's a successive chain of smaller smaller versions of the same texture. And the reason why uh, computer graphics have that is so that uh, the graphics card can automatically pick the right size of texture based on how big the object appears. In, in the scene. So if I go farther and farther away, it will automatically pick the, the pixel from a smaller version of the same texture. And um, that has some advantages. Uh, first of all, it looks better, so it doesn't look pixely and too crisp in the background. And uh, also for performance reasons, it's, it's, it's better to have MIP maps. And normally MIP maps get, get selected automatically. So if we have something like this, this text2D over here, that if, it, if, if a texture has MIP maps, it will automatically select the right MIP map based on the distance, but also the angle that you look stuff that, 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 you, that you look at it at. So normally it does it automatically, but we can also uh, get our own MIP maps. And we do that by using text2D LOD. And, um, and that one takes a a float four as a UV coordinate. So here I'm going to say float four, and then it's still going to take my my float two, which is the standard UV coordinate. And then the third coordinate is going to be zero, and then the fourth coordinate is going to be which MIP map I'm going to be sampling from. And um, so zero would be the largest texture, and then every every number that I go up here, the texture gets twice as small. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, so you see. You see already that it took it like it takes a smaller version of that same texture, and each time I increase this, it it's gonna make my texture twice as small, which is uh, which is useful if you if you if you know how it works and you can exploit it, then you can do some cool things with that. Uh, and in this case, we can because a smaller version kind of also already looks like a blurred version of the same texture. So um, let's do something with that. So let's go over here and um, mm, let's call this blur over here. And then over here, I'm going to say float blur equals blur times seven. Um, and then I'm going to take my blur value over here, my underscore blur value, and let's expose that. So I'm going to go there. And I'm going to expose it over here. I'm going to say uh, blur. And that's going to go from zero to uh, from zero to one. And the default is going to be one, let's say. And uh, let's see what that looks like. So uh, now my texture got sharp again, and that is because uh, my blur is uh, very close to uh, very close to zero. But now, as you see, as I as I increase this, it gets blurrier and blurrier and blurrier. And uh, if this doesn't go the same way for you, because um, either it could go in steps or it couldn't work at all. And and if that's the case, you want to click on the texture and you want to make sure when you look at your texture here that it has that it has generated MIP maps. That's one thing. And the other thing is that filter mode is set to try linear. So if I set this to bilinear, then you'll see what happens. Um, apply. So now, if I change my blur, you see that nothing happens, and then it goes in steps. And uh, we don't want that. Uh, we want we want the the texture sampler to interpolate between two different MIP maps. And uh, the way to do that is to make sure that this is set to try linear instead of bilinear apply all right <clears throat> okay so now we have a blur a, a way to blur our 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 texture and now uh, like we could use that to um 
to make the fog. So, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I have this fog trail here that I can use to to uh, to change the the blur value. So here, if I do this times fog trail, so now you can see that everything looks sharp. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. Um, it's perhaps hard to see. Yeah, well, it's it's a bit hard to see, but you see that now now it's actually blurry inside of inside of the fog trail. So what I could do is I could just do the opposite here. So uh, one minus fog trail, and I keep putting a decimal dot here, but on, in Unity you don't have to do that. So I could just do that. Okay, so now I have it blurry everywhere except for where where a drop has just passed there it is sharp and then it slowly starts blurring out again and uh, i can still change uh change the amount of blur here to make it more blurry or less blurry um so that's how you could do that um okay so then the next thing is i want to make uh many more drops so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna make it into like all this stuff add it into a function and then we can add afterwards different layers of, of this. So I'm going to go float three layer and float three because it's going to return in the X and the Y. It's going to return. Uh, it's going to return the offset, which is, which is in any which direction. And then the Z it's going to return how foggy the window is. And so as an input, that's going to take a UV coordinate. I'm going to Call it capital UV over here and then a time as well. And so now let's take this entire swath of code over here all the way all the way to here, cut it. And um, now let's go over here and then we can return a float three, which is the offset and uh, the fog trail. Fog trail. And then we have to do a few other things. So uh, over here we're using i.gv. We don't have that, so we have to replace that. i.gv over there and over here as well. And that's one thing. And the other thing is obviously inside of here we don't have color. So let's just get rid of that. And here as well. Uh, that should be it, I hope. So now let's go over here and let's make float three drops equals layer i dot uv, and then I'm gonna throw my uh, my time in there as well. And so now this so this returns a float three uh, where the fog trail was encoded in the z of that, and the offset was the x and y. So drops dot x y. So let's check that. All right, so that didn't change anything. So that tells me it worked. But now the cool thing is that I can very easily m add more rain. So I could just go over here, copy that, and then I could say plus, and then uh, I'm gonna make another layer and that layer obviously uh, should have different parameters to start with. So I'm just gonna multiply my UV by some number a little bit larger than one. And I'm going to also add some offset to that as well. Um, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have we have two times as many drops now. Let's let's do that a few more times. So let's say like this. Uh, and uh, whatever, something like that. And then also different offsets for all of them. Something like that. Okay, so now we have full on rain going on over here, uh, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty cool. But now what we really want is we want to be able to look through this window and it behaves like an actual window. Uh, so we don't have to just put a texture. And the way we would have to do that is we'd have to render the scene without without this window and then use that and render that to a texture and then use that texture uh, with pretty much the same approach over here. Uh, luckily, Unity has something for that. So we don't have to code that all manually. 
and uh, that's called a grab pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to this pass tag over here. And before that, I'm going to say grab pass. And then over here, I'm going to uh, write a, a, a name. And basically what this will do is, is uh, this will tell Unity that uh, before we render this, uh, just render the scene the way it is and and um, and make that available as a texture called grab texture inside of my inside of the the rest of the shader um, so what I can do now is I can make that grab texture over here and I can add an, a sampler for that so I can go over here call it grab texture and let's have a look and see what that looks like uh, let me just clean this up too here get rid of all of that Okay, so now down here, uh, let's add that here. So call equals text two D, and then grab texture and I dot UV. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now uh, we have something that looks like it's almost transparent. Yeah. So there's a few a few issues with that. Uh, one issue is that it doesn't fit with the background right now. And the other issue is that uh, there is a bunch of objects that are still not showing and um, let's tackle that issue first. So the reason why that happens is because uh, in game engines or certainly in Unity, uh, objects that are opaque get rendered front to back, meaning that the objects that are closest to the camera get rendered first and then, uh, and then farther objects get rendered afterwards. And that's for performance reasons so that it doesn't have to draw, let's say, all the pixels for uh, for for this uh, uh, for this object behind it. If if later on an object is gonna go in front of it anyways, so that's the standard way this this gets rendered. But for transparent objects, uh, that poses a problem because uh, then you get it in, like in this case when you have a transparent object that is in front of other objects, but it gets rendered, but it gets rendered first. Then, then there's nothing to blend yet by the time this, this object is, is rendered. So when this object is rendered, these other objects haven't been rendered yet. So that's why you don't see them. And so it doesn't work that way. So what we have to do is we have to tell Unity to render this object last. And the way to do that is inside of tags over here, I can go over here and say Q equals transparent. So when Unity C, uh, transparent so when unity sees this it knows that ah okay this needs to be rendered after all the other objects so that it can properly blend with those objects and so now you'll see that all the other objects are visible okay so that was the first the first issue now the second issue is obviously that the mapping doesn't seem to be correct and for that luckily unity has some uh, has some handy functions um, so for that, uh, we're going to add another UV coordinate over here. So in so this structure is all the information that gets sent from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. And there's my UV coordinate. And we're going to make another UV coordinate. So I'm going to go over here, call it grab UV. And uh, I'm going to say text chord one here. And, um, and now inside of the vertex shader over here, we have to uh, we have to generate that grab UV, and to do that, I'm going to do grab UV, and that needs to be generated uh, uh, like taking into account where the camera is, what like field of view you have, all that stuff. It's uh, but luckily Unity can take care of that for us. And uh, what you have to type here is uh, Unity proj chord, and then compute grab screen pause these are two macros that unity gives you and then we could just throw o dot vertex o dot vertex into that and that will give us proper proper uv coordinates so now inside of here inside of here we could use that grab uv grab uv and actually there's one thing here is that this gives me like projected UV coordinates and like they have um, 
that's that's a that's a vector four instead of a vector two. So actually over here you have to make sure that this says float four over here. And now over here over here I have to use the the text to the proj function in order to get that properly. So let me see what that does. And now you can see that it properly shows the background so this is like it looks maybe that it's not rendering the object but it is rendering the object but like it is like it shows it shows exactly what is behind it so that's why it looks like it's transparent but this is not the way i want to do it like we we want to do it ourselves so it's easy enough what i can do is do is float proj uv equals i dot grab uv dot xy divided by i dot grab uv dot w that is what this proj actually does so so if i if i go back here now i can just say proj uv and that should not change anything so hopefully it doesn't okay it doesn't okay so that's the same thing so now you might think, oh, okay, well, uh, now we just do this text to the load uh, uh, thing and, uh, and we're done. Unfortunately, that doesn't work that way because this grab pass, this grab pass does not, where, where did it go? Oh, over here. This grab pass does not generate mid maps, unfortunately, because I guess generating mid maps is an expensive operation and so they don't do that. So we have to do this in a different way. Um, and so the way that we could do this is by sampling this texture multiple times and then averaging the result in order to get kind of a blur. Um, so let's do that. So what I'm gonna do, and this is expensive. Okay, so this is expensive uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, processing, but that's the only way that, that we could do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a loop. So for float i equals zero, i is smaller than a number of samples, and then i plus plus. And uh, now I'm going to make a, a constant here. I think it's the other way around. Const float, const float num samples equals, let's make four samples. And, um, and now inside of here, Let's see. Yeah. Now inside of here, I'm going to add to my color each time. So, uh, and also I have to make sure that my color starts at black. And so, so now what this will do is it will get into this loop. It will go a, a bunch of times and each time it goes to the loop, it will sample from the texture and it will add to the original color. And then over here, I have to divide by num samples. So now this will just get an average of a bunch of different pixel colors. And well, right now we would just get the average of a bunch of pixels that are all the same. So this shouldn't really change anything apart from the fact that it's more expensive. So what we want to do is for, for pixels that are more blurred, we're gonna, so it, like if this is the, the main pixel that I would be sampling, I'm going to sample around that pixel. So I'm going to I'm like multiple samples around that point and then I'm going to uh, uh, we're going to average them and so so it looks like a, a blur in the end. So for that I'm going to add here proj v plus some offset and uh, there's I guess there's different ways you could do the offset but um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an offset that um, that is a certain distance away from the pixel. And then each time we get through the loop, it just rotates around. It just steps around that pixel. Uh, so for that, I'm going to do float to offset equals float to the sign of an angle. So any, anytime you rotate something in 2D, you will see something like this, the sine of an angle and the cosine of an angle. And then um, I'm going to multiply that times my blur value so that, so that if we have zero blur, 
then um, then this offset is also going to be zero. So it's going to just sample the same pixel and you're going to have a sharp result. And the more this blur is, the more the farther away from the pixel you're sampling, so the more blurry it will look. Okay, so that's my A. And then, um, mm, so I'm gonna have to make my A, my A for angle here, set it at zero. And then each time I go through this loop, I'm just gonna rotate a bit uh, so that we don't sample the same picture, uh, pixel each time. So we could just do A plus plus. Uh, that's a lot of stuff off the top of my head. Let me see if that works. Okay, this just gets me a bunch of stuff over here. So this blur value is probably way too large. Let me just make that blur value smaller. Times equals point 0.1. Okay, so now we have a well you could you could see it a little bit now, like you see a bunch of different copies of the of the same uh, uh, of the same background. Uh, so let me just make it smaller even still. Okay, and now you can see it a little bit better. Um, so now it just gives me four copies of the same of the same um, uh, of the same texture. And now in order to make this better, well, you could you could increase the number of samples. So let's say if I make have sixteen samples, you see that already looks a little bit better. But there is another thing which is that we we can do this offset a different for every pixel because right now for for every pixel the offset is 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 pretty much the same and so so over here my starting angle because my starting angle starts at zero for every pixel uh, but we can make that different we can make the starting angle uh, some pseudo random number and and remember this like this can only differ by one and uh, my starting angle should be uh, should differ by between zero and two pi to get the full rotation. So times 6.2831, let's say. So now every pixel is different and you see that makes it better. Uh, so for 16 samples already, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, let me see here, four samples. Okay, so on four samples, you see, you can see it better for four samples. So this is with ra randomization, this is with no randomization. Okay, so you see there's a big difference there. Um, okay, and uh, let's, let's go all the way up to 32 samples. Again, I said this is an expensive shader. Um, I wouldn't go much higher than this because it probably gets too expensive. And so now you can see this, uh, it's still not really nice the way the blur is because you still kind of see a sharp edge here. Um, and that is because, and maybe I should change this. Yeah, anyways, uh, you, could, you could still see a sharp edge and that is because this offset, for all the 32 samples, that offset is the same distance from the center. So basically we're sampling a circle right now around the pixel. And what we want is we don't want to sample the, 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 the perimeter of the circle. We want to sample anywhere inside of the circle. And um, so for that, I want to multiply this offset uh, by a random number between zero and one so that each time, so if this is my main pixel, right now we're stepping like, let's say we start over here and then the next pixel over there and over there and over there, but all those distances are the same. So now uh, what I want to do is have that distance random between zero and one each time. Um, so here I can say offset times equals and um, here I could just have a random number based on let's say the, the sample that I'm at. Uh, so I can make my own random function here. I could say frac sin and then i and remember i starts at zero so if we don't uh, want that we want to make it start at one let's say and then times some larger number not too large though let's say times that so now we're randomly on a sine wave somewhere that is between plus one and minus one and now i multiply that by some larger number so now i'm somewhere between plus five thousand and minus five thousand and then now i take the fractional component of that which is my semi semi or my pseudo random number between zero and one and um 
Now, like, have a good look here at the sharp edge over here that you, that you see. And let's see if it alleviates that. Okay, so now my blur is a lot, is a lot better, a lot softer. And there's different ways that you could uh, that you could shape this. Maybe um, maybe we don't want it. Maybe we don't want it like this. Let me just put this in its own here. Uh, let's call it D. Float D equals that. And before we multiply that, we could shape we could shape that that number so so it biases the pixel sampling to be farther away or closer closer by. So uh, what I found is looks kind of nice is if you take the square root of D. And so it it it. it it's kind of subtle, but you'll see the difference. It just makes, I don't know, like to me, it looks it looks nicer this way. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, distortion. Da -da. Okay, so that's only the. Oh, okay, yeah. Obviously, we need. Um, I was like, where did our drops go? Uh, but that is because, uh, like, over here. Uh, when we make the, pro the projection UV, we still have to we still have to add the original offset for the drops to that. So over here, I'm going to do proj UV plus equals drops dot x y times distortion. I hope I do that right. Let's see. Okay, so now there are the drops back. All right. Cool. So now one more thing. If you wanted to use this in a video game, then yeah, it looks great right now because we're close up. But if you're far away, this starts looking pretty horrible, like some sort of glitter, glitter party over here. And um, that's kind of the same issue as why mitmaps were invented in the first place, because now you could see that if it if it's still uh, samples like the high dev solution even if you're really far away then it, there's just too much information and it will start pixeling so in order for that not to happen we want to really be able to scale the effect uh, scale the fidelity of the effect uh, like of the effect based on the size that that we're showing it at and um, so for that uh, we are going to use this here. Let me just um, go over here and say float fade equals f width of i dot uv. And what f width does is um, how do I explain this? Okay, so normally in pixel shaders you don't have access to what your neighboring pixels are doing unless you and unless you just recalculate everything your neighbor is calculating you cannot just peek over to your neighbor and see what he's doing generally uh, but there are there there are functions i think it's called d d f d x d f d x anyways um i'll figure it out i'll put it on the screen um there are directional derivatives that you that you have that that allow you to 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 peek at what your neighbor is doing uh, kind of and and we can use that uh to to figure out like how much detail we need in our in our in our thing and so what this f with does is it it will it will it will return the difference between this pixel and the neighboring pixel so so if i'm all the way zoomed in then the difference between the uv difference between each pixel is very very small right if you if i go from one pixel to the next my uv will only increase a tiny little bit but if i'm all the way zoomed out like now the difference between one pixel and the next in uv space is very large and so that's what this f width can return to me uh, and we can use that to to like to figure out how much detail we need to put in so let's let's just have a look at this f with by itself. So times equals zero, and then uh, call plus equals fade, and that's probably going to turn me black. Yeah. 
So it's going to turn black and maybe if we go all the way back and it will turn to white because that that change between between two pixels is very, very small. Uh, but if we multiply this by a larger number, then we'll see something. So you see like now, now as we get closer, this goes to black because the, the difference between successive pixels in UV space is very small. But when we get farther away, it gets larger, larger, larger. So we could use this. And uh, so let's do that. So let's go over here times 50. And uh, like now I want to clamp this between zero and one. Uh, so let me saturate that saturate. So saturate is the same as clamp zero one. So now my value cannot go outside of the zero one range. So let's have a look at just that. Okay, so now we have something black over here and it goes to white over here. All right, so now we could use that to to scale our, our effect down. So um, and let me turn it around so that it's white when you're close and it's black when you're far away. So that's just one minus. So now it's white over here. And as we go farther away, it goes to black. Awesome. All right, so one thing that I want to change is the, the, the distortion. So as we're farther away, so let me just go back to the original one. So as we're farther away, we want to kind of make this distortion smaller. You see, like like you you, you get you get rid of a lot of the white highlights. So so let's multiply the distortion by by fade over there. So now we have less distortion as we go farther away. Okay. So now we have full distortion as we go farther away. It goes less. Maybe we want to tweak this. And then the other thing is, uh, like, I, like I want to, like, I want to get rid of these these trail drops as well. And so for that, I'm going to. So over here, I have my drops. That's my fog trail. I want to multiply my fog trail as well by by the uh, by the fade. So let me just put the fade in front of this. And then over here, my drops.z, I wanna multiply that by fade as well. Okay. Yeah, now you see that it's a lot better in the distance. Okay, maybe uh, maybe we want to, like we will want to bend this a little bit more. But yeah, that's that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So yeah, so there you have it. Let me, let me multiply this entire thing by 0.9 so that we can see the entire, the entire thing. Okay, there we go. And um, let's uh, drag this out here and have a have a good look at what we made. All right, so there we have rain on a window, that is uh, that is fully tweakable. Now, and actually, there's a few more things that I want to show here. Uh, is that well? Here now we can go over here is that um, what we could do here is we could we could change time so we could make time go backwards so that's that's pretty cool uh, that you couldn't do in other ways and uh, and we can change uh, the distortion on our drops to make them less less visible or more visible uh, we can have as many drops as we want for the same price that's that's important so in 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 shaders the cool thing is that you that you basically get as many like uh, as many drops as you want for the same price as one, um, and then we can zoom in all the way, take our microscope out, and still zoom in all the way to here. So that's that's pretty neat. Um, let me just put it back to to where it was, something like that. All right. Well, I hope that helped you. And uh, I would love to see what you guys come up with and make. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope you like this. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you really like this and you want to help me, there's a few different ways you can, you can help me. Um, you, can, uh, you can share this with your friends or post it on Twitter or wherever you are. Uh, you could also check out my Patreon page uh, and, uh, and support me and be able to vote on future videos among other among other things um either way i hope you like it and i hope you, i'll see you next time